Hi and welcome to my channel. This is part 2 of everything I knit and design in 2023. In the previous video, part 1, I covered the first 7 designs I knit and published in 2023 and I am going to continue to cover and talk about the remaining 6 designs I published last year. But before we go on, I'd like to remind you that the year 3 sale is currently live and you can enjoy 30% off all single knitting patterns published in 2023 on all platforms, no code needed. The discount will apply at checkout automatically. And the new annual bundle, the year 3 bundle, is up on my website and it is a value pack consisting all of the knitting patterns published in 2023. The sale runs from Friday, the 1st of March, 10 a.m. Central European time until the end of the day next Friday 8th of March. So for a whole week you can enjoy 30% off. So if anything here inspired you for your next knitting project this is a great chance to grab a pattern or two and happy knitting, enjoy, enjoy watching the video and grab a beverage and perhaps your knitting and I hope you'll enjoy part two of everything I knit and design in 2023. So the first design I published in August 2023 is the one I'm currently wearing and yes I finally switched sweaters. I just wanted to show you the fit on me but I'm going to also take it off in a bit to show you the design details namely the crochet braid up close because I think you can't see it from there. So this design was created in collaboration with Vivian from Calling Sheep in their rustic lovely DK weight yarn called Pommern Look. So the wool used in creating this yarn which used to be called simply Pommern Look but now it's called Pommern Look Fine because there are three different qualities of yarn available now is um, derived from the native to Germany German heritage breed Pommern Schaf. I wrote quite a lot about it in the pattern itself if you're interested in this design and you want to learn more about the breed this is what we're going to talk about. So it was a while before I uh, had the original idea which I also had because I wanted to bring awareness to this undervalued breed and it's amazing wool and it's amazing properties. I just wanted to kind of shed some light on it <laughs> with making a design. Yeah but that did not happen because I said there were no commercially available yarns and at one point accidentally I stumbled upon this really sweet Instagram account of Calling Sheep which is also a small store on the island of Rügen in Sussnitz. So I was just looking at the store and I saw that they had made wool out of Pommenschaft, made yarn out of Pommenschaft, sorry. It's a DK weight yarn and it's wonderfully naturally dark medium grey and I have two schemes here and one of them is the original which is here this one right and the other one is the new iteration and the original is ever so slightly different I haven't knit with a new iteration yet although I grabbed it when it first came out. I grabbed the sweater's quantity for when I feel like making another design with it or knitting something else with it but I haven't tried swatching with it. I haven't tried knitting with it. From the feel I would say that the new iteration is slightly softer so it's still rustic but it's ever so slightly softer. The older one was really soft for a rustic yarn so it's nowhere nearly as scratchy as Little loopy, not even close, but it, it still has a bit of a more rustic feel to it and the new one is much softer, well softer and it's slightly darker and if you look at my pictures of the wool pull, because I don't think that in this light you can see the color that well and if you look at Vivian's she made hers in the second iteration in the new Pomengluk. As I said because of the properties of the sheep's breed I kind of wanted to make a design that kind of honored them and that would be suitable for outdoor wear but wouldn't be too boring. So yeah like something that would kind of enhance the natural properties of this yarn. So let's start with the name. I named it Wool Pullover which is basically a way to say wool pullover because wool is a low German word for wool 
or the high German word would be Wolle. It fell in line perfectly and worked out perfectly with the whole theme of the design, which is just Pommenschaf themed. I'm wearing my Stormor sweater now because it's the only thing I haven't shown you yet and the only thing I have two samples of that I have left because everything else I still wanna kind of be able to lift up and show you. But I think I only have two more samples. Okay, so wool pullover is not from the bottom up because it has structural benefits so everything about this design is made in a way that you have a compromise between stability and structure and the benefits of seamless knitting and i am a fan of choose your own adventure type of pattern so you often notice in my patterns that you can omit or include certain elements you know, that are optional and that might add something visually or they made, uh, might add something structurally and I really love that. I like options <laughs> so I try to include them. So I chose to knit it from the bottom up in the round but it has a hidden seam. So the idea here is that if you're knitting with rustic yarn like Pommengluck or Lore or any other yarn and you want this to be a more structurally stable sweater even if you're knitting it in silk mohair or some softer yarn you might actually want to add the extra seam just to help it keep shape it is entirely invisible on this side so i'm not sure why i'm even showing that i guess to show how invisible it is so you can see the seam on this side though you can decide if you incorporate it on the body only and you don't want it on the inside of the sleeve to incorporate it on both or just omit it all together. You can just knit it normally. It's just a little detail that adds something to this sweater. So the highlight of the sweater is this little crochet braid. There's actually two braids but you can see the big one better and just keep calling it crochet braid. Believe it or not this detail you can also incorporate in the end and you can decide whether you want to incorporate it or whether you want to leave the sweater as it is at the end before you decide to knit the ribbing. So another element in choose your own adventure. While it looks like it is kind of like a detail to add visual interest is also a seam. So it's a secret seam. It doesn't look like that's why it's there but it is a way how to also kind of add to the stability and structure of the sweater. So you can keep it as it is, just have a plain raglan line here or you can just make it into a crochet braid, a set of braids. The instructions for the crochet braid are written instructions in the pattern. I have laid out all the steps. It should be easy to follow. I don't think I have a video tutorial. Since I'm starting to make videos, I'm probably gonna make one for, for this technique. You might be able to find some on YouTube. I didn't find a good one. But yeah, like the written instructions should suffice. It's pretty intuitive. It's really not that hard. You might wanna just do one and try and do it over and over until you get it right before you unravel the rest. But I love this sweater. I think that all of these little details kind of just add this special something because I didn't want to make something really boring but at the same time I still wanted to make something accessible that was accessible to beginners so if you're new to knitting you could just take the sweater as your first bottom-up project and for the most part like I guess the difficult part would be binding off and picking up next stitches if you're new to knitting so maybe it's not your first <laughs> project yeah, if you're a new knitter, you could just make it into a simple seamless sweater. But I still think that even if you're new, at least, at very least, you know, elements like, like the mock seam are just not difficult to add. It's a secret seam, but it helps really. So, yeah. I am gonna incorporate the mock seam in more projects, especially last year as I was making some of these designs, I kind of noticed that as much as I love seamless knitting, the sweaters do need these little elements, these little seams, these little textured details for added stability. I've already shown you the Wayfair Raglan. Love it. Loved it when I made it. Loved wearing it. But at one point it does lose its form. Not only because it's knit and unspun yarn, but because it doesn't have any seams to hold it in place. So I love this sweater. I love wearing it. I've worn it on hikes with a vest on top and it's just like the perfect yarn weight for our temperatures where it's really not too warm and not too cold in winter. It's just 
something in between. It's kind of it gets cool, but uh, when I released it in August, Vivian had the new yarn in stock and it sold out really quickly and there was a limited amount available and I think that there was a shop update also recently that sold out really quickly as well but if you want to knit wool pullover in Pommengluck and you haven't had a chance to do so yet and you hadn't had a chance to grab some yarn you have to check in with her but I think that early in the summer there's supposed to be a bigger shop update and it might be that there's going to be yarn available for everyone and longer in stocks. I think that this is such a beautiful, beautiful grey. It's a very special Pommenschaft grey. I think this breed is worth exploring, whether you're in Germany or not. And yeah, it really deserves attention. And so yeah, one of my favorites. I'm just really happy with this design and how it turned out. I noticed that my ball of Saona keeps running away. <laughs> I just found it on the floor <laughs> randomly again. The next one is also one of my favorites and it's the sweater I've been wearing for most of this video. And I love everything about it. I love the design, I love the fit, I love the yarn. Obviously it's New Tiden, which is one of my favorite yarns ever. The one I've used in most of my designs and it's unspun yarn. And it's not only because it's New Tiden, but it's this colorway. Because normally I shy away from color, but once in a while there will be a color that I'm just, I just need to have it. And it was like this with this yellow. I called it vintage yellow because, I don't know, it has this golden, ambery, kind of yellow color that you kind of see in older movies or, or pictures. But recently I kind of realized why I think it's vintage. Star Trek uniforms from the original series. It's the same color. Isn't that amazing? I love that. The colorway was called Masculin and it was kind of a collaboration but not in the classical sense. There was a special event where Nutiden designers, which is, well, anyone who's ever published a knitting pattern in Nutiden yarn, had the opportunity to buy the yarn from the August collection early before the Patreon or public shop update. I picked two colorways and one of them was kind of like this brownish color, I think. You can see all of that in my older Instagram posts, but this one is the one I really immediately fell in love with. And yeah, I don't think they've done one like this so far. So it was a very, very special thing. So we got to show you some of these color waves early. So I'm not sure where I left off because my batteries ran out for the camera and I am out of backups as well. <laughs> so I've been recording for the better part of the day since this afternoon, early afternoon. And yeah, but I hope that I am going to be through <laughs> with everything soon. Two more sweaters, two more shawls. Oh no, wait, I forgot the wafer tea. So that one's next and then one more sweater, two more shawls and then we're done with 2023. So this one is called Before Fall Sweater and it is one of my favorite designs from last year to wear and it was also a favorite to knit and design and it is the first entry in the Before Fall collection which is an ongoing collection. I originally wanted to create the entire collection last year in fall more or less but that was kind of unrealistic. So I'm just gonna continue adding items to it as I go. The entire collection is designed for unspun Nutiden yarn, specifically the Lammas August collection. And I have almost all colorways from it. So you're gonna see other items knit in that collection. This sweater features really lovely British moss stitch pattern or alternatively known as seed stitch on the front. And it has also these ribbed raglan seams. 
seems to be a favorite detail of mine, but I just really love how when you have some textured panel on the front, be it like little braids or you need something to visually separate it from the stockinette. So whether it is a little cable or it's like a little rib pattern like this, there has to be something. And this little rib dragon detail also continues down the sides. So it also has this little little detail that visually kind of separates the stockinette from the moss stitch panel. And also adding kind of like a seam kind of thing. And I also have the same kind of running down in the middle of the sleeve. So you don't really see it most of the time unless you're lifting your arms, but it's there and I think it's nice. So just a little detail. The back is stuck in it, separated by the raglan. I keep talking about it as if it was knit from the bottom up. It's actually top down. In the pattern, I have a variation of sleeves. I don't have a sample for it, but I have a variation that includes ribbed sleeves. The whole collection was named Before Fall and the sweater is named Before Fall. And the vibe behind it actually was, when I saw this color, I was kind of reminded of yellow flowers. And I wrote a blog article where I kind of mentioned that inspiration. If you go on my website, you can check it out. It's a whole thing about uh, kind of summing up my relationship with Nuti Danyan from the beginning. I'm gonna link it below. So you can read a little bit about the inspiration behind this. It's kind of when I saw the colorway, it kind of reminded me of, of this scene in early fall in, a, in one of the more frequented hikes of ours. It's going into fall, but it isn't quite, it's still warm. You can still wear a t-shirt for most day. You might need a sweater if it gets a bit chillier later in the evening, but there's this, there's still this warmth and heaviness in the air. And I don't know, like whenever I think of early fall approaching and everything, it's just this feeling. It's kind of like this bittersweet, summer is gonna end soon, you're excited about fall, there's some crunchy leaves that are likely there on the ground because it's been a really dry summer. It's been 30 degrees for the past three weeks and everything's dried out and dead, but you tell yourself it's it's because it's fall. So it's kind of this little in-between stage before fall. And because of that, I wanted to release this pattern before fall. I'm not sure now, like if I'm actually talking out of order about this, so I'm very happy with it. It's just a simple unisex Raglan sweater and it's very wearable and easy to knit but still fun so i love the fit of it this one also recently made it into my wardrobe <laughs> as always once i start wearing one of my samples i can't stop wearing it anymore so it is holding up really well it's a very special blend it's a different blend. it has some textile in it i'm not sure what the rest of it is but it's kind of more rustic and and stable and sturdier than than usual i never worked with textile before and I really enjoyed it. So. I'm so happy I have this, this little raglan pattern ready. I started working on a second one in white. I know that it's a black sample and that's really not ideal. I really wanted a little black tee, so I made one, but in uh, hindsight I should have made another sample. I did not have the time. So in contrast to the t-shirt design earlier, summer wood tee, which I truly enjoyed knitting in, in fingering white yarn because Sewona is very special. I knit this one in Another amazing yarn, but for different reasons. Knitting for olive cotton merino yarn. It is a cotton merino blend. I have one here, it's not the exact same color. It is 70% cotton, 30% merino, and it's colorway, this one was colorway coal, I think. This one is not that. Yeah, so I really love the yarn for the results it creates. The drape is phenomenal and I wore it quite a lot so there's a bit of pilling at the bottom especially because I just like tucking my t-shirts into jeans and that kind of and I think it might have been even the backpack straps kind of rubbing against it because I did wear it hiking on that day I took photos and I had my backpack as well and some some signs of wear when I made it straight out of blocking it 
you couldn't tell it apart from a store-bought t-shirt really and it is uh, kind of a more boxy side but uh, as I said the Wayfarer collection is meant to be simple and easy to pick up and just knit so the only shaping here is the one that goes over the the shoulders and the back the short rows German short rows to optimize the fit no other shaping besides that you can knit the sleeves shorter like I did or you can make them a bit longer I am knitting an off-white sample or I'm not currently knitting it I started knitting on it last summer and then I abandoned it because I moved on to making sweater designs and it was getting colder I also have trouble knitting out of season even though I'm a designer and I should know better not ideal because if I start designing when it gets warm or shortly before then I have to make the sample write a pattern edit a pattern and then also test knit it and with this kind of schedule it just can release the patterns maybe in autumn so that's really something I have to work on this one had a very tight test knit deadline because I wanted it out before summer was officially over. I loved wearing this t-shirt. I wore it so much in the summer and I admit that it's not really the best thing to wear when it's too hot. When it gets like really 20, 25, this is the line where I would just draw it, like especially if it's really humid. Uh, this is a very high cotton content. When it's really hot and humid outside and in our parts it often is, I prefer to have pure merino base layers and t-shirts, uh, tank tops, uh, lightweight ones. I think that it regulates your temperature better. It is more moisture absorbent. Cotton merino blend, it feels good for like early summer days or just mild summer days it it does feel quite heavy when it gets really warm yeah if you if you don't live anywhere with like crazy hot and humid summers all summer long it's a good option to have and also it is perfect to wear underneath things so especially when it's not too cold outside when you don't need that pure pure wool on wool and wool and layers and layers so yeah just a nice lovely basic so if you enjoy the wafer raglan you're gonna enjoy this one too it's a good staple i definitely want to make multiples it's just really hard for me to get through that many tiny stitches <laughs> but i'm looking forward to having my my white version ready i kind of want to make that one with, i think i said that slightly longer sleeves so wafer tea pattern in the description So the last garment design I published in 2023 is from October and it is called the Storm of Sweater and it's the one I've been wearing as well. This one is the original sample. Storm of Sweater was inspired by the Icelandic Lopapasia, the traditional Icelandic Kalvok sweater and to honor that inspiration I knit the first sample in Litlopi. I came up with the idea early last year so even though I published it quite late partially because I was knitting a second sample and other reasons and then it was summer there seems to be a trend where a lot of my designs it, they seem to be weather inspired um I I knew that of course I know that sometimes it's based on something that I want to have and I miss like imagine spraying and sometimes it's inspired by what's around me and I guess like they say write what you know <laughs> so it's like design what you know in early spring we often have these really relentless violent storms and you really can't do much and it's very dangerous frankly especially at higher altitudes which is where I like to hike and go so it's bad so I was kind of last year I know I was getting annoyed with the whole situation but at the same time this frustration I guess resulted in this design I created because I kind of wanted to create something stormy and dramatic just as dramatic as the weather was at the time and this design was created based on German storms <laughs> also at the same time I had to think about classic vintage Icelandic sweaters these and this is in late low piece so it's not bulky weight yarn but yeah I kind of had to think of these oversized bulky Icelandic sweaters if you look at the photos of the old low magazines and you have these vintage images of a 
man and a woman wearing these really oversized sweaters somewhere on some background of an Icelandic landscape and you have these really bold patterns or if you think of vintage sweaters back in the days as well I'm not sure which decade I'm thinking of right now yeah but like these vintage sweaters with this really oversized kind of bulky fit and these geometric color works not necessarily even on yoke it could be just anywhere and I kind of thought of that vibe and I wanted to use East Exlet Lopi from my original sample and I had exactly these colors in mind so this is the the nature black I'm not sure what the numbers are but it's the nature black it's the combined with the darkest gray and then the white and I think that like I mentioned that in the pattern as well I think it's really important if you like for you to keep this this middle this wave white for the design to retain that dramatic moody aesthetic like it was intended to of course color choices are always up to the knitter and it's really a matter of individual preference but i think that if you keep this main piece you can do so much i think that it gives you more options what to do with the rest of the colors as long as you keep the middle line white you will have that drama and you can really play with the colors as you can see that i chose pretty subtle colors for my nutidan sample i used one of my all-time favorites it's merca and it is the one from 2021 i think i used the same colorway actually in my barren land sweater barren land sorry one of my test knitters actually knit this really gorgeous version inspired by Twin Peaks and she and her friend I think made a made a video if you're like a 90s kid it's gonna really resonate with you I think I think she really did a, a good job on that and you should really check it out if you go to the hashtag uh, Stormwood Sweater on Instagram you should be able to find it the construction is um, also from the top down and I also use the tubular cast on for my original sample yeah so it has the color work yoke I think it's very beginner friendly as well and manageable I don't think it's very difficult yeah the floats aren't very long the increases are kind of very in a supple way incorporated in the color work below the um, yoke there are short rows as I said previously, I always do them whenever possible, whenever the color work allows at the very least. I do them below the yoke. So yeah, I, I think the fit is really, really good. I'm not the biggest fan of round yoke sweaters as a whole to wear but I think that this fit this turned out really nice I think the fit is very comfortable I think that the yoke is just the right length I didn't wear the Icelandic one to keep it pristine but now that I've had it on that's that so yeah that is the Stormmoor sweater it's the last garment design published 2023 and the last garment design published period yeah, because I haven't released any any more since then. But I'm working on several new ones. I have two uh, designs ready one has two samples the other one has one sample but that is in that case it's enough but before I finish up with the designs from 2023 just wanted to show you these two little shawls scarves they're sister designs and both are entries into the before fall collection and even though I released them in November so they're still part of that collection. They were both knit and designed using Nutiden Lammas collection, yarn from the from the August collection, just like the before fall sweater. This one is called Hazel Scarf. And this one 
a chunkier one is called uh, Seasons End Shawl scarf shawl I guess there isn't much of a difference but it kind of it sounded better to me and yeah a shawl kind of I guess it feels more substantial and a scarf kind of feels like this little thing and out of the two of these I wore this one a lot and this one not so much even though it's so beautiful I think it's very cozy and warm and but I wore this little one a lot quite like quite a lot because it's very practical I like shawls but I like the idea of them but I never really end up wearing the big ones because it really is never that cold. The whole before fall collection is continuing that same theme of simple but beautiful stitch patterns, just classic simple stitch patterns that are just fun to knit but easy effortless. This one is half brioche so if you never tried half brioche or any brioche kind of knitting. I think it's a really easy entry, good way how to practice it. And I think it just creates this really beautiful texture. I think it's Crucidula, but I'm not entirely sure. And it is also another one that is a Texel blend. I really, really enjoy working with these Texel blends. The thing that is notable about both of these is that they do feature really explicit written instructions. I think that they have at least two or three sizes. I'm not sure. You can check that out in the pattern uh, descriptions. But even though they're really simple designs, I think that they have enough value because I also, you know, also including as always how to work with unspun yarn and really detailed written instructions. I try to include as much value in the, in the patterns as possible, despite them being really small accessory designs. They, oh yeah, they both feature I-cord edging as well. So it's just very neat and lovely. Yeah, so what I included in both of these patterns, so, you know, you can just buy one of them. They're pretty similar. The only thing different is the stitch pattern. This features kind of like this really lovely slip stitch pattern. And this one is, as I said, half brioche. And what I included in the patterns is kind of like what I called shawl mouth. And it's just basically a bunch of instructions that tell you how to adapt these. If you if you have different nutidon blend, if you have different yarn, if you perhaps want different kind of measurements, you know, in your shawl, like a different length, a different width. And it includes instructions how to kind of calculate that. So if you want to make it wider or longer, I kind of try to help you figure out how. So or you just follow the pattern. It's a really quick and easy knit, especially this one just makes a really quick gift knit or I think it would be also lovely as just like a small stash buster project if you have a little bit of some beautiful yarn left over. Yeah, so those are the last two designs from 2023 and that's that. <laughs> so in 2023 I published a total of 30 knitting patterns and I think it's a couple of more than the previous year. I think it's quite a lot, but it doesn't seem like when you say it out loud, 30 knitting patterns, doesn't seem like that many. It's oh, one a month, <laughs> although that wasn't strictly my schedule. So I hope that I've given you some more insight into these designs, if you were curious. As a recap, so I think that 2023 for me was a little bit wild and all over the place in terms of design. Although when you look at them, side by side. They don't seem that crazy, but I kind of went from I want to make these rustic, outdoorsy, moody things to things like the soft-spoken sweater or Imagine Spring or Summer Wood Tea. And I think that if you compare it to the previous year of 2022, I think I made um, more kind of these rustic style sweaters and garments. In general, I think there was one cardigan not only sweaters. I think I made them more consistently. There was more consistency across the board, except for that one time where I came up with a design in triple silk mohair, because I just saw this really gorgeous yellow, like kind of like lemon-ish yellow <laughs> colorway from knitting from olive silk mohair. And I had these three balls of silk mohair in my basket and I was just looking at them. I saw them stacked on top of each other and I just could imagine like, how lovely it would be to just have like a little sweet top just with these three colors. Just so yeah, but like I think that was the only thing that kind of stood out of them from the rest. I think that I learned a lot last year and I think that each year and each design is a learning experience and it's about also kind of finding a way.
that's it for part two of everything I knit and design in 2023. I hope you enjoyed watching and I hope that you find perhaps inspiration for your next knitting project. If you enjoyed this video, please consider showing your support by liking, commenting or subscribing to future content. And a small reminder again that you can still enjoy 30% of all single knitting patterns until Friday, 8th of March, end of the day, Central European time. The new year 3 bundle containing all knitting patterns published in 2023 is up on my website and it is exclusive to my website only. The 30% off discount is valid on all platforms, my store, Ravelry and Etsy. No code needed, discount will apply automatically at checkout. If you enjoyed this video, please consider showing your support by liking, commenting and subscribing to future content. Happy knitting everyone and bye! And I'll... I don't know what to say.